This is Twit. Steverino, all your So this is good news. Uh, in a few weeks, the Japanese government is going to try its hand at the practice that's come to be known as credential stuffing across its own country's massive installed base of IoT devices. Wow. And you got to know that in Japan, they're IoT happy. Um, you know, anything it can find publicly from <laughs> enterprise network level down to end user routers wow. whose owners never change their default passwords. The uh, NHK is Japan's national public broadcasting organization, which reported that the government had approved this first of its kind venture several weeks ago. So mid-February, staffers from the National Institute of Information and, and Communications Technology, NICT, will take many previously successful username and passwords and use them to attempt to the the you know like officially use them to attempt to break into as many as 200 million Whoa. randomly selected io publicly accessible iot devices located across japan routers webcams dvrs uh, it's IOT. like twice the population of Japan, by the way. <laughs> it's two, yeah. two per, per man, woman, and child. Well, when you consider that, you know, that, like electric toothbrushes are online yeah. in Japan, yeah. uh, everything. So then the owners of the breached devices will be told by the Japanese government to please fix their devices, <laughs> please. bolster their cybersecurity. Okay, we'll see how well that 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 stage goes. So the intent behind this interesting white hat move is to reduce the viable attack surface that's currently available to attackers prior to next summer's approaching Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics, uh, which occurs in 2020. So summer before summer after next. Uh, Sophos noted that some systems will go down around the oh some systems did go down around the time of the opening ceremony for the winter olympics in pyeongchang uh south korea last year hmm. so sort of worth being maybe a little preemptive um so although the immediate goal is to tighten up Jap japanese citizens internet facing security before the olympics the result will almost certainly be improved security overall. I mean, given everything we know about what happens when you scan the public Internet, you find stuff. So the NICT has reported uh, that IoT devices were at the heart of a large number, more than half, 54 percent of the cyber attacks that it detected in 2017. And of course, that number is only growing. So. I've talked about several times way back in the early days of Code Red and NIMDA that I participated in some discussions with the U.S. federal government. I was on a conference call that was particularly memorable with the head of the DOJ uh, and a bunch of us security types were begging to be allowed to write a sanitizing worm that would find the vulnerable devices and fix them for their owners. It would have been easy for us to do. But we were told in no uncertain terms at the time that doing so would be illegal yeah. and would op open us to the full prosecution and wrath of the U.S. federal government. So it was like, uh, okay, you know, we'd like to help, but we don't want to be put in prison. So, you know, Leo, since then, a lot has changed. And things seem a lot less black and white than they were then. Mm -hmm. We now have, you know, we're post Snowden and post WikiLeaks. We've got, you know, leaks from about the CIA and the and apparently about the NSA, which suggest that, you know, no one here is a Boy Scout. And and it's increasingly seeming that because of the size of this threat, that 
tying the hands of white hat hackers while the black hats are allowed to run free uh, and to cripple our cyber infrastructure is seeming less and less correct in practice. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I don't think we've talked about it, but in the news recently has been, you know, the observation that apparently foreign actors are able to cripple our electric our electric grid and there was something else some other major aspect of our cyber infrastructure um, has been reported in the news and it's just like okay you know are are we actually completely unable to do anything with the fact that we are we are hosting um, this kind of potential trouble and uh, it's, you know, it sort of seems counterintuitive. So if this Japanese experiment bears fruit and you can bet that all governments are watching closely to see how it goes, it seems to me it could go a long way toward opening some doors and maybe changing some minds about the fe the feasibility of being proactive. Um, you know, and it could be done incrementally also. For example, Individual ISPs could be chartered with the ability to inspect the publicly available ports of their own customers, whom they know because they have a, a customer, you know, a, a customer relationship with them, uh, and then to deal with them one on one to detect any or or to resolve any vulnerabilities that are detected. And that, of course, would create – if that were allowed, that would create a market for um, a big hardware security vendor to produce carrier-grade network vulnerability scanning, which would scan into an ISP's address space looking for and logging and then allowing vulnerabilities to be handled. It just sort of seems like we're going to end up there sooner or later and, you know – Sooner is better than later. Yeah.